Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and welcome to episode 8 of my series, Casual vs. Speedrun GTA 5. Both players have just finished the mini sum mission and are trying to leave the docks. The speedrun had already gotten a car as the last mission ended, but the casual is still having to retrieve one before getting going. The speedrun is headed directly to the start of the next mission, even though they haven't received the text message required to start it. Since the casual plays slower and gets more text between earlier missions, they are given the text right away from Steve to prompt the mission. In this episode, we'll be doing the Meriwether and Blitzplay heists, along with all the setups for Blitzplay. Since those missions can be done in different order depending on the speedrun's luck, or lack thereof luck, we count them as one big section. Speaking of luck, our speedrun has gotten kind of lucky and found an early garbage truck. Before Blitzplay, we'll need to retrieve a garbage truck and a tow truck. There are small setup missions you can do to retrieve the two vehicles, but they take a long time, so getting one off the street around here is much faster. The speedrun could be risky and try to get it later, but generally taking one early like this is a safe play, as not getting a garbage truck off the road quickly could be anywhere from a 50 second time loss or more just to kill the run completely. The casual is catching up on the same road to the speedrun. The speedrun could have taken an early left onto a different route, but staying straight heading out of the docks avoids an area of the map where a random event of a bank truck may spawn, which interrupts the receiving of text messages, which could delay the start of the mission for the speedrun a bunch. This meetup at the FIB lot is the true start of the Blitzplay setups now. The game puts the player into Trevor's truck, but the vehicle you arrived in is just off to the left, so the speedrun will get right back into the garbage truck to save it, then drive out of the lot with the fancy bump off the pole to carry speed. The casual drives right out of the lot, and once about past this intersection, both players will receive the phone call that conferences all three characters, which allows the setup missions to begin. For the casual, this means looking on the map and heading to one of the setups. A garbage truck doing the rounds is spawned into the mirror park area and selected first. Of course, our casual could go to any mission right now, but for the sake of the comparison we will have them match the mission order of the speedrun. Plus, that means grabbing the closest missions anyways. Once the speedrun received the phone call, the game instantly gave the take the truck to the lot prompt and we drive right back and deliver the garbage truck. It's so much faster than going up to Mirror Park and back. There are so many strategies in this part of the game depending on which vehicles spawn where. For example, if we didn't find a garbage truck before the mission, the speedrun might get one right after the meetup at the lot. Or if not finding one at that point, there's two options. Either make a save file and reload it to refresh the traffic spawns, or move on to future missions and hope you find a truck later on at the last possible moment. Knowing which options to take depending on what the game throws at you is a big part of this section of the game, and makes the speedrun much more than just a go here, do thing kind of run, where the game knowledge and thinking ahead can really affect the speedrun's outcome. It is rather difficult to convey how much of an impact some decisions make and why the speedrun may make them, as generally the way to learn GTA 5 speedrun is not by success, but by failing a bunch and learning from those mistakes. Now that both players are done delivering the Trash Master, the top left of the game prompts the player to get a getaway vehicle for the heist. Oddly, the speedrun is simply allowed to use the vehicle that was left at the lot, while the casual cannot. I tested this three times, and I'm guessing it has to do with the instant delivery of a non-mission spawned garbage truck. Either way, it's unlikely the casual would use an SUV for the getaway, and would instead steal a sports car as our casual does here. The speedrun is setting the SUV as the getaway vehicle as close as possible to where the Blitzplay mission itself will occur, to minimize the driving needed at the end of that heist. The speedrun hangs up all these calls instantly, as they only need to begin in order to count as completed. The prompt for this location is suitable must come up before you can save the vehicle's location, and our casual is unable to save the tunnel as a spot and instead has to use this parking lot. The same prompt kept our speedrun waiting for a moment as well before saving the car, and they have to make sure not to go into the phone menu early to delay it longer. The casual looks at the map and sees lots of missions on the other side of the city where Franklin usually is, and so both players are switching to him for that general reason. There are however about 5-6 to six locations he can be here. These two switches around the beach are the most common, but Franklin could also be in traffic on the freeway or all the way up in Vinewood. The speedrun puts on sleep mode as they need a text message to start a mission soon and don't want phone calls interrupting that spawn. The speedrun was lucky to have Franklin's car already here instead of having to grab something random off the street. The speedrun arrives at the mash shop to begin the technically fastest mission in the game, which involves getting out of the car, buying the same mask three times, then getting back into the car. The speedrun will then head to the next mission's location, but has to stop a ways to continue waiting for the text message. Any closer would prevent the mission from spawning. They get rather unlucky here and have to wait quite a while. 
Speaking of being unlucky, the casual has arrived at the mass mission, but an NPC turned aggressive on them, and the ensuing fight spooks the shop owner and fails the mission. Luckily, the checkpoint is close by anyways, so not a huge loss, but amazing that even the simplest of objectives can be failed. The casual takes their time to select three different masks instead of just grabbing matching ones. Back to the speedruns waiting, this text from Lester could have been gotten much sooner, even before this episode's events, but sometimes that's the way things go with texts. We call this RNG, and I'll make my explanation a bit clearer than last episode. RNG means random number generation, which is basically the chance and luck within the game, like the game rolling dice to determine what happens. For example, which text messages you get, how enemies move and aim, or what vehicles spawn on the road. The speedrun finally gets the text and can start assassination, and the casual catches up a moment later. Up to now, the speedrun has done these setup missions 4 minutes faster than the casual, but there is still more blitz play setup to do, so we'll set aside those timers of 9 minutes and 4.52 for now, and come back to them later. With a fresh timer for assassination, this mission sees Franklin taking on a hitman job for Lester by killing a guy coming out of a hotel. All future assassination missions are side missions, but this one counts as being part of the main storyline and must be completed before you can do the Blitzplay heist, similar to how mission number 4 of pulling favors is technically a side mission, but required for the main storyline. The speedrun takes ideal lines backwards to head out of the beach area, then takes a direct path with minimal turns over to the hotel, instead of the GPS that the casual will follow, which technically is a shorter route distance-wise, but takes much longer the travel due to all the direction changes it has to make. There is of course also lots of improved driving techniques and tricks done by the speedrun covered in other episodes and videos of mine already, and a playlist of this series can be found in the description. If you're new to this series, make sure to give it all a watch before asking any questions, as it's likely answered, but if not, feel free to ask away. The speedrun jumps out of the car just before hitting the yellow dot as it starts the cutscene just a moment quicker. The casual is going to head up the parking structure to find a spot to shoot from, but the speedrun is going to find something else, after taking another wall bounce to carry speed. There is a minute and a half of time until the target spawns, so the speedrun will make use of that time to find a better car for the next few missions. Game knowledge of which vehicle is best is important here since there is time to make a good choice, even coming down to the runner's personal preference on certain vehicles. The speedrun finds a comet which will be perfect for good top speed during the next few drives. There is no danger of getting the cops here since the random police spawns seem turned off during this mission, and stealing a single vehicle won't cause issues. The only worry for the speedrun is to make sure they don't crash or do too many burnouts near the hotel lobby, which spooks the guards and insta-fails the mission. The speedrun is also going to use their free time to upgrade some weapons and buy some new ones. The larger ammo capacity and explosive weapon purchases make the future shootouts and missions as Franklin much easier. We can only buy these weapons here because of the money received from the first heist, which Lester gave us back on mission 21 right before we jumped out of the blimp. The casual has reached the top of the parking garage and realized they could stand on top of Franklin's car for a better view of the entrance area. Our speedrun ops are in an even better location, parking very close to the lobby with the car facing the direction they need to go to the next mission. The speedrun then looks out with the gun to pre-break the window and then aims at this sign. By looking backwards like this, it makes the target consistently spawn out of the lobby door close to us where the guards aren't blocking him as much, instead of it being a 50-50 chance on which door he walks out of. The timer ticks down and the speedrun headshots the target with a submachine gun and then drives away before the game even confirms the kill. The casual nabs the guy just a moment later, and then has to worry about escaping. The speedrun gets away clean and ends the mission headed to the next boiler suit setup. The casual finds the ramp on top of the parking structure here and uses that to get down, which nicely avoids any shootout or police chase. Thanks to that, the casual finishes the mission only 45 seconds behind the speedrun, so both are around 3 minutes long for only a 22% time save, but that's about expected for the simplicity of this mission and the speedrun was still very productive in getting a better car and upgrading weapons during that short time. We'll now be going to do more blitz play setup, so I'll bring that timer back up, and both players will be heading into the city to do the boiler suit mission, which is just getting overalls for the heist. This requires going to a downtown ammunition, and annoyingly it has to be this ammunition and not the one where the speedrun just upgraded weapons. Similar to how we haven't upgraded player cars yet, it's still not worth it to upgrade weapons outside of that downtime, as the player doesn't unlock the really good stuff until much later in the game. Level 1 or 2 vehicle upgrades just aren't worth the diversion to the mechanic yet. Depending on the earlier switch from Trevor the Franklin, this boiler suit setup may have been done first if we had spawned somewhere in the city instead of at the beach, which just means after assassination you go straight to the Merryweather heist. 
It can differ every run, but the order shown in this video is the most common one we do for over half our runs. But knowing when to take advantage of better luck, or minimize loss for worse luck, is what makes this blitz play sequence so challenging. The speedrun bought the first boiler suit on the list three times, but the casual will take some time to again choose a separate one for each character. The next mission to head to after the boiler suits is the start of the Merryweather heist. The speedrun will again use the shortcut over this jump to get down to the beach area quickly, although they are unlucky to basically land right into a car. This jump is risky and works out most of the time, but traffic in the left lane here happens every now and then. The start of the Merryweather heist is another spot where sometimes the speedrun will have to sit and wait for the text to begin the mission, but in this playthrough they have already gotten it quite earlier, so the mission can begin right away. We'll again store the Blitzplay setup timer for a bit, and switch to a fresh timer for the Merryweather heist itself. The speedrun jumps off the walkway to get down to the car right away, so it can be moved to get Franklin in as fast as possible. We'll be doing the freighter option on both playthroughs, but I'll show a comparison of the offshore option for the speedrun to explain why we take this faster option at the end of the video. In this mission, Trevor wants to steal an unknown device from Meriwether's ship, and is making Franklin and Michael do all the dirty work of getting onto the ship and planting the explosives. The drive over is basic, with both players actually taking the same route and avoiding traffic, but there's no major scary parts or any worry of cops. The speedrun uses the walls on the bridge to help guide the car, and the sides of the bridge to boost off of. Once approaching the yellow dot, the speedrun will flip the car around so that when the car is forced to stop by the checkpoint, Franklin will be getting out already on the north side of the bridge. Then the speedrun switches the first person down the stairs as it's just that little bit faster. After a time of day cutscene and showing where Michael is, Franklin has to take out some guards for him. There is an easy collateral shot both players will get, but the speedrun will do it right away and grab a third guard before the game switches to the next cutscene, which means we don't have to spend time killing that guy as Michael later. Now on board as Michael, the speedrun will quickly throw the first bomb then continue on. They hold the gun aimed over this edge in order to have a faster falling animation. From here, they know where each guard will be and run past many of them, along with throwing the sticky bomb using the quick throw button from a distance instead of walking up to place them like the casual. Franklin offers to snipe the bad guys for us, but we don't want him to. If he were to shoot any of the Meriwether crew, he'd have less ammo in his sniper, but we want to be able to use all 10 shots when we switch back to him. The speedrun then switches the first person to head up the stairs and is done on the boat already. The casual is slowly working their way up the boat, having to take out most every guard or wait for Franklin to do it for them, along with slowly planting the bombs. Unfortunately they die due to not seeing a guard on the second story here, but the checkpoint doesn't move them very far back anyways, and they are now resynced with the speedrun. The speedrun knows where all the enemies on the boat and in the cars will spawn now. Their goal is to take out the two guys on the deck, the four guys in car 1, reload, then the four guys in car 2. A perfect run can get all 10 guys in one go, remember the sniper has 10 shots. But it's hard to get that consistent for me personally still, though I expect in a month or two I'll have no problem doing that. Getting more collaterals with the guys in the cars helps a lot here, I get 3 in this clip alone. The casual takes a while to get all these guys down, as they pop up and down from behind cover deceivingly quickly. The speedrun is staring at this container corner as the helicopter that spawns will fly right through it, and this sets up a nice insta-kill on the chopper, though second or third shot is still pretty good. These kinds of tough shots to get enemies in one go is the kind of things that will still save lots of time in this game over the coming years if it continues to be a popular speedrunning choice. This category currently takes 6 hours and 20 minutes, but near perfect play could be closer to 6 hours and 15 minutes or less. The game just isn't that level of optimized yet due to its length. The speedrun is now looking where Michael and his next attacker will be located, as the next 6 enemies will be gone instantly as they spawn in the same spot every time, and learning to predict that movement only takes a few runs of practice. The casual was able to relatively easily take out the chopper as it conveniently hovers directly in front of you if it's given time to fly its full loop. The speedrun will be waiting for Michael to get off the ship, instantly skip the cutscene, then bring the phone up with the arrow keys to call the detonation right away. If the speedrun received a text message before this mission started, they will have opened the phone once as Franklin to clear out the new text alert, otherwise you can't go directly into your contacts. The casual has been fast forwarded so they appear ahead of the speedrun, but the speedrunner will catch back up even during these slow swimming parts. The speedrun just swims directly over to the device in first person, and then directly over as Trevor in the submarine, slamming into it with the sub to bounce the momentum around and pick it up quickly. There is no dolphin strat as the sub is too slow with the device attached, but the calmer waves on the surface the speedrun has due to using the older patch does help get a bit of speed over the casual. 
That's the end of the Meriwether heist, with the casual taking 9 minutes and the speed on only 6.5 due to the faster driving, on foot movement, and being much faster at taking out all the guards. One more time, we'll come back to finish the rest of our blitz play setup. The speedrun switches the Franklin to head towards the tow truck, while the casual checks the map as Trevor, and will just steal a car and go to get it as Trevor. The speedrun could get lucky and find a truck on the bridge, but it's rare and we usually have to go to do this mission based spawn, but sometimes the game is nice. A very lucky player can get a tow truck and garbage truck at the same time all the way back at the start of this episode, and tow the garbage truck around. I'd say I end up doing that at about nearly one fourth of my runs lately. The speedrun will just drive into this mechanic working on his car to kill him and prevent him from calling the cops on us. The casual is very unlucky and a random spawn cop drives past him just as he's stealing the car. This can and does happen to the speedrunner sometimes, though rarely and it is a massive pain in the butt when it does. The speedrun just needs to take the truck back to the lot without crashing or getting the cops. Pretty simple. Franklin's power is used to get the truck up to speed and keep it on the ground. Crashing in a slow vehicle loses more time than crashing in a fast one, and should be easier to avoid anyways. The casual is going to struggle getting away from the cops once in the tow truck, but they will catch up eventually with lots of fast fording. The speedrun puts the tow truck at the lot, then gets into the truck left here to get away the required distance. They will go up the hill so that when they come back down to start the mission, gravity can help carry them from a stop up there. I'm going to teleport the casual ahead a minute and a half to where they've just finally escaped the cops in the hills above the lot. The speedrun gets the mission pass screen for the tow truck delivery right after entering the intersection and begins the turn around to head back. The casual delivers the truck and finally all of the setup for blitz play is done. There is a mission chart linked in the description, and basically every mission up until now has to be finished in order to begin blitz play. It really serves as a midpoint for the game. All of the setups took the speedrun about 9 minutes, and the casual nearing 18 minutes to double that, resulting in a large save due to knowing the optimal way to finish the objectives of the setups, even if it meant not doing one of the spawn missions. Now for the finale we've been working towards, Blitz Play. In this mission, we'll be stealing from an armored truck and then having a big shootout with the cops before, spoiler alert, we get away. The speedrun waits just before this pothole for the phone call to finish, as being any closer won't allow the mission to spawn. The casual will have to turn around and drive all the way back to the lot. I expect within a few weeks, myself or another runner will figure out some timing we can use to hit that pothole area going nearly full speed instead of having to come to a stop. We start as Michael in the garbage truck and we'll be using it to block the road. Nothing too special yet, besides the speedrun taking a large racing line through the corner, taking out the weak crosswalk sign of the big truck as it doesn't slow it down. A quick aside, if you are new to the series and would like to see more, there is a link to the playlist in the description, and if you find my content worth it, a sub really helps, and yes, I do plan on doing this series and other games later on. You can also eat some ice cream in my honor, as long as it is not mint flavor, but I do prefer the sub. The speedrun comes to a perfect stop on the dot to block the road and triggers the next cutscene, where we select the sticky bomb and aim it to prepare to be thrown out the window after we hit the armored truck. The casual takes a moment to be precise with their placement, when really the game is just pretty lenient about where you stop. The speedrun just throws the bomb onto the back of the armored van from inside the truck instead of getting out like the casual will. The two guards are killed to avoid further dialogue or delay from them. Then the speedrun sets up a glitch with the C4. The speedrun will kill Michael right as he begins to move, signaling the next part of the mission has begun, then kill themselves as Franklin with the C4 right after. This sets up a glitch later in the mission that will teleport the speedrun to a hospital that happens when the player dies after the mission failed screen has already come up. The speedrunner will then set up some C4 to prepare for the approaching cops. In this mission, there are multiple waves that must be cleared by killing a minimum amount of cops before the next sequence will take place. They will use the RPG to clear these two cop cars, then blow up the C4 when they see the third cop car driving over it on the minimap. These three kills trigger the cops to spawn behind, so the speedrun switches the Michael and takes him to the back. Back here we need to kill 8 cops, so 5 on the ground are taken out, then the helicopter is blown up quickly by shooting the tail rotor since we can't see the pilot, then one more cop on the ground is hit. Then, instead of t switching to Franklin on the front again like the casual will do, we just turn as Michael and take out 3 cops in the front right away that trigger the snipers to spawn. Before switching to Trevor, the speedrun hits reload on Michael's weapon so it'll be topped off when we get back to him. The three snipers are in the same spot each time and picked off quickly, then back to Michael as a new wave is headed towards him. Almost the whole wave is taken out, then you can see the spotlight from the police chopper rise up and know it's time to turn around. 
This time we can see the pilot and kill him to death instead of having switched the Trevor to use a slow and unreliable RPG on the chopper. Michael's wave is then finished off, and the speedrun swaps the Franklin in order to clean off a few more guys before the minimum amount needed to allow us into the garbage truck to begin the getaway is reached. The casual has only just cleared the first back wave with Michael, and will be yanked around between the characters to clear enemies. The speedrun gets into the garbage truck and can drive it to the getaway car parked close by, even though there are still a few cops alive, as the casual clears the front with Franklin, and then will do the sniping as Trevor. You have to destroy the garbage truck after getting out of it, so the speedrun throws a grenade out of the truck as they slam it into the wall to a stop, along with using the same wall to catch the grenade before running away. Missing this throw and blowing up your getaway car would be really silly, and I totally definitely haven't made that mistake before. The speedrun then has to drive a minimum distance away from the getaway location to be put into the next part of the mission, and conveniently we can drive backwards exactly where the shootout just happened without any problems. The old return to the scene of the crime trick, the B button on controller is spammed in order to hang up the phone call as quickly as possible to begin this force switch. With Michael, we'll drive over to Devin Weston's house real quick, using the banking on the mountain to carry speed. The casual is still going, clearing out the second Michael wave before being prompted to RPG the helicopter. They manage to get it first shot, but when you switch on the game time, it's moving much slower than an early switch. The speedrun arrives at Devin Weston's house, and then as the mission ends, they are teleported to the hospital right away in the center of the city, as our first mission next episode begins just a few blocks away. We've been here after the death on the pier after Daddy's Little Girl already, and we'll use the death after mission fail glitch that teleports you as the mission ends a few more times during the run. The casual arrives at their getaway car and blows up the truck with a less risky sticky bomb, and will also head to Devin Weston's house after that, though they will be stranded up in the hills instead of already being back in the city. That's the end of Blitz play, and due to a highly optimized shootout and knowing exactly how many cops to kill, the speedrun did Blitz play in only 5 minutes, one third faster than the casual, a pretty big difference for a shorter mission, bringing the difference in gameplay between the two up to an hour and 40 minutes and we're not even halfway done. We'll now take a quick look at what the speedrun might be like if the alternative option of Offshore is chosen for the Meriwether heist instead of the freighter we do choose. These missions aren't perfectly speedrun routed for this video, but it's routed enough to show you why we don't use them. First of all, just like the other jewel store job option, there's an extra setup mission to do. Instead of starting the Blitzplay setups with the garbage truck as seen in the beginning of this video, the speedrun needs to go all the way up to Zancudo after finishing minisub. I figured they might try jumping into the helipad to see if there's a lucky helicopter waiting there, otherwise we have to drive all the way up. Along with being incredibly long, the offshore option is painfully boring. There's almost no action, just driving, flying a slow helicopter a bunch, then driving a really slow submarine for even longer. I'll move us a minute ahead, and there's no fancy or cool jump into the fort. In single player you can just drive straight into Zancudo. There is a small risk of getting hit by a tank, but it's not a huge worry. They are scripted to be worse when you are on a mission like this one. The only enemy to worry about is two guards near the chopper, which are super easy, then an attack helicopter chases after you. All you have to do is fly straight towards Trevor's airport without getting too high in the air, and you'll outdistance the chopper and avoid the radar. Land back at Trevor's airport, and that's nearly 7 minutes wasted on a secondary mission before switching back to Franklin to be in the city again. Even if the main heist was faster on its own, the length of this setup mission could only maybe be improved by 30 seconds or so, and the single heist is never going to be 6 minutes shorter. To begin the actual heist, the offshore route requires driving all the way up the sandy shores, and it can't be done in a super fast car as you need to have a four-seater vehicle to fit the whole crew. For the offshore variant, we are just going to retrieve the same device, but it'll be on the bottom of the seafloor instead of on the ship. The freighter heist is arriving at the bridge and doing that sweet turn to get Franklin out of the car faster, while the offshore is driving in a straight line. The speedrun gets the collateral snipe and the bonus guard as the other player continues driving in a straight line. You may begin to be picking up on why when people ask me to do an alternative heist speedrun on my stream, I tell them I don't plan on it. The offshore is finally about to arrive at the airstrip, and will then fly the big slow cargo bob in a straight line. I'm realizing how nice it is that the more skill-based and fun freighter option also happens to be faster for this heist. While this plays out, I figured I'd mention I apologize for this video taking a few extra days to come out. However, I have a good reason. As of the release of this video, I am now the world record holder for the main category of GT5 speedrunning after I put in some extra practice and extra sleep to rest up instead of doing videos last week. 
Funnily enough, it's only by 4 seconds, but I'm super proud to have finally said I've held the world record in, and I look forward to the coming battle for first place between me and the other runners, and I definitely want to keep myself on top if I can. The offshore finally gets to drop the sub, and it has to be dropped near the platforms. You can't go directly over to where the device is even if you already know its location. The dive down is boring for the speedrun, just following the route between the underwater cliffs. Jump forward a whole minute and the offshore rams into the device to pick it up, then another 40 seconds after that we surface and get picked up by the helicopter, while meanwhile the freighter heist is already finished. The offshore has to deal with some easy Meriwether enemies as Franklin in the back, then you continue flying as Michael in a damaged and even slower helicopter. Once the chopper gets back to the airstrip, the offshore option will have been 4.5 minutes slower, along with about 6 minutes slower because of the extra setup mission, so we save 10 minutes just by choosing this better heist option. That's all for this episode, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for some driving in a straight line that's actually fun, and some helicoptering that's also actually fun.